Lord God, he assesses the dimensions of his will with that elevating into dimensions of transformation. It's in that transformed state that you can behold the dimensions of his will. Perfect day, saints. My name is Hoko Meja and welcome to Verse of the Day. Today is day five and we are looking at Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the first word I would like to take note of is be. When a command is given in scripture, it is not just simply given. The follow-up instructions are also given. And these instructions are given in seed format so that you may dig deep and access the ability to fulfill the command. So he right? says, and be not conformed to this world. What does that mean? He means observe the patterns of the world and do the opposite. And this is a theme that is very consistent throughout scripture. We may be in the world, but we are not of the world. So in John chapter 17, verse 16, Jesus is praying for his disciples and he says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus prayed this prayer during the Last Supper. At this point, his disciples had spent about three and a half years with him. And because of this, Jesus could confidently say that just like him, they were not of the world anymore. What does this tell us? This tells us that spending a particular amount of time means that a particular change has to come about. Yes, you were once of the world, but after a particular amount of time of being a follower and disciple of Jesus, you should be able to also confidently say that you are not of the world anymore. Now let's look at the next phrase where Paul says but be ye transformed what does transform mean now that you have established yourself in separation the next instruction apostle Paul gives is to be transformed the word transform implies taking on another form how do you take on another form by renewing your mind how do you renew your mind in james chapter 1 verse 21 it says the engrafted word which is able to save your soul now your soul and your mind are interchangeable so that means that if paul is instruct uh, instructing us to renew and like we said renew transform is basically going from one side to another right you're changing and then James goes on to say, the engrafted word is the one that is able to save your soul. That means they, our how has been answered. The mind and the soul responds to the word of God that you have fed it. The change that comes in the mind is through the word. The change that comes in the body is through the application of the word. Now, when that word grows, it becomes the sword of the spirit mentioned in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. Note how Paul says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We all know about the full armor of God. Um, Apostle Paul instructs us to ensure that we have on the full armor of God, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So he tells us exactly where to, to use this armor and um, what this armor is specifically. So we know that truth goes in the loins. We know that um, righteousness goes in the heart, just like that. And when it comes to the helmet of salvation, he follows it up with and the sword of the spirit. But then he tells us what is the sword of the spirit? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. So here there is protective gear and there's also a weapon. There is one that you use to stand and there's one that you use to wrestle. If you look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse, if I'm not mistaken, verse 11, it says that um, put on the whole armor of God so that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. But then it goes on to say, for we wrestle not. So there's two instructions there. You need to be able to stand against, but you also need to be able to wrestle. So you use the helmet to stand against. If you are attacked, you use salvation to stand against mental in the men in the helmet in the head because the helmet goes on the head mental attacks you use salvation to combat against to stand against them so to defend yourself right but when it comes to fighting against mental um mental attacks you don't use salvation you use the sword of the spirit which is the word of god hey guys thank you so much for watching today's verse of the day this one was really really long so i decided to cut it off right here but tomorrow we will continue with romans chapter 12 verse 2 and we will talk about the dimensions of the will of god so i will see you in day six and stay blessed